Now the last thing we're going to talk about today is section 4.8. I'm going to show you how to deal with equations that have fractions in them. Now what I need you to know is that when you have equations, you can do anything you want to them, pretty much, as long as you do it on both sides of those equations. Do you remember those equations that we had a long time ago? We could add to both sides, subtract both sides, multiply, we could divide, do pretty much anything you want that still works even though you have some fractions. Quick question, how many people like fractions? <laughs> yeah, I don't even really like fractions that much. I know. You know why? It's because they're more difficult to deal with because you have to find a common denominator and things like that, right? And you have to simplify them. And that's not all that great because you don't have to simplify whole numbers. You have to find an LCD for whole numbers. How many people would like to eliminate fractions from here on out? Then pay attention to what I'm about to show you. And listen carefully to what I'm about to say. If you have an equation, hey, do we have an equation? Yeah. Yes. What makes you so sure that we have an equation? Equal sign. Equal sign. Equal. If you have an equal sign, if you have an equation, I'm going to show you how to eliminate fractions. If you don't have an equation, you need to focus up here. If you don't have an equation, you can't do this. But if you have an equation, you can get rid of fractions any time that you want to. Would you like to learn how to do that? Yes. Here's how to do that. The first thing you're going to do you're going to write everything as a fraction. So if it's a fraction, great. If it's not a fraction, write it as a fraction. For instance, 2 thirds is a fraction, 5 over 12 is a fraction. Why is it not a fraction? Make it a fraction. How do you do that? Over one. Leave yourself some space between these, these values. Hey, uh, by the way, do you remember how to do LCD? Yeah. Your next step is find LCD. <laughs> and the third step, I'll tell you tomorrow. No, I won't, because we don't meet tomorrow. I'll tell you Wednesday. Wednesday. I'll tell you Wednesday. Wednesday. Last two steps, and we'll continue. So if we look at our problem, firstly, can you recognize it is an equation? Yes. What tells you that? Equal sign. Yeah, for sure. Now, I've asked you to write these things as fractions. Basically, what we did last time is said, that's already a fraction. That's already a fraction. But we're going to write this as y over 1 to change the y into a fraction so that we can deal with it a little bit better. Minus 2 thirds equals 5 twelfths. And I'm also going to have you put a little bit of extra space right here. The reason is, you're going to see in a little bit, we're going to use that space to multiply by something to get rid of our fractions altogether. After that, I'm going to have you find the LCD. Have we done that already on this problem? Yeah. <coughs> okay, we can do it pretty quickly if we haven't. We look at all of our fractions. That's not just these two. That's everything. Every one of our fractions. Can you tell me the LCD that I should have? Okay. Now, here's the cool part. This is the part that's going to actually do some work for you. Now, we, we typically don't like fractions, right? Because they're harder to deal with. If you remember this step, this is going to save yourself a lot of time. You're not going to have to deal with fractions at all anymore. You want to learn that, right? How to not have to deal with fractions if you have an equation. We take that LCD that you just found. And what you're going to do, third step, you're going to multiply that LCD by every term that you have. That means every fraction that you see up there, which is everything, right? Everything's a fraction. We're going to take that and multiply every single term by the LCD. By the LCD. Let's look at what that, that looks like on the board. So if I have y over 1 minus 2 thirds 
and equals 5 twelfths. How many things should I be multiplying by the LCD right now? What do you think? How many are up there? Two. I've got two on this side. I've got one over here. I mean all of them. So how many do I have all together? Three. I want to multiply all three things. <coughs> all three terms. This is a term? Yep. That's a term? Sure. That's a term. Multiply every one of them by the LCD. So what I mean by that is we're going to multiply this one by 12. We're going to multiply this one by 12. And we're going to multiply this one by 12. Every one of them. This is why I had to leave a little space right there so you could write that number. Now, unfortunately, we, we are dealing with some fractions, and we're multiplying by 12. Is there a way that you can change 12 into a fraction so that we can do our work? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, here's the cool part. I'm going to recap this because some, some people get a little confused about what we're doing. Here's the idea. The first thing we're doing is writing everything as a fraction. That's not a big deal because we already have some fractions. We're just going to write our y as a fraction, as y over 1. Then we find our LCD, which you guys should be pros at that by now. We're looking at the denominators, finding out the smallest multiple that has every denominator as a factor. So in, in our case, that's our, our 12. So 12 is our LCD. We take that LCD and you multiply every term by the LCD. Now the reason why this works, I'll show you this one time, I won't have to show it to you again, but do you remember that you can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number and it's still equal? Remember that? You can add to both sides, subtract to both sides, multiply to both sides. That's what we're doing here. In fact, don't write this down, but just watch for a second. What we're actually doing is taking this and that and we're multiplying both sides by 12. This side looks just like that. This side, do you see what would have to happen with that 12? Yeah, you would. Remember distribution? Yeah. This is going to take that 12 times both those terms. That's why I've told you you're going to multiply every term by the LCD. So essentially, we're multiplying both sides by the same number, <laughs> by the LCD. This would give you the 12 times y. This would give you the 12 times the 2 thirds. This would give you the 12 times the 5 twelfths. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Good deal. Okay, so we've done that. We've changed the 12 into a fraction. Now comes the cool part. We're going to try to simplify every one of these fractions. So last step is you're going to simplify. You should have no fractions at this. Hey, let's do this. This is the cool part. Let's look at the right-hand fraction. Can you see anything that's going to simplify between 5 twelfths times 12 over 1? What's going to happen there? Well, no, I remember I had to multiply fractions. What was that? Sure. Remember that we would do this, right? We'd cross out our 12s. How much are you going to get on the right-hand fraction after we've crossed out those 12s? 5 over 1. Yeah, or? 5. Are you okay getting the 5? Let's do the next one. Let's do this one over here. The, the 12 over 1 times y over 1. Does anything cross out with 12 over 1 times y over 1? No. Okay, so we'd have 12 times y over 1 times 1. How much does this fraction make for you? 12y. Do I need the over 1? No. Okay, let's just do 12y. Minus, okay, the last one, we've got 12 over 1 times 2 over 3. Of course, we'd multiply those things. Cross out what? Three. That's awesome. What goes into both numbers again? Three. So three goes into three, One. and into twelve. Four. Sure, four times two Eight. over one times one. Notice how the minus stay the minus. I've got eight. Hey, hey, hey. Would you rather deal with this one or this one? I would definitely rather deal with this one. If you do this one, you have to add two-thirds to both sides, find a common denominator, put those fractions together, which is possible, but you have to do the whole, whole deal. Here, we use our LCD to eliminate denominators, which is way useful in, in this kind of simpler example here. But in later examples, this is very, very nice. When you get to math C, you're going to learn this in conjunction with um, these 
pretty heavy duty expressions that we can get rid of fractions all the time with equations. It's going to save yourself a, a lot of time there. So this is kind of just the beginning for you. But what we do is find the LCD, use that, multiply both sides, or in other words, every term by the LCD, and you should have no more fractions. It's kind of nice. Kind of, kind of nice? Yeah. Do you like that? Can you solve that? Yeah. Let's continue. Now this is much easier to solve because we've already done problems like this. How do you get rid of the, what do you need to get rid of first, 12 or the 8? So we're going to add that to both sides. And we're back to stuff that we know how to do already. We get 12y equals 13. We added 8 to both sides. What's our last step? Oh, wait, can I do that? I will. Yeah, I'll get 1 and 1 twelfth, or just leave it 13 twelfths. I don't care if you, if you leave it as 13 twelfths here. Uh, if I haven't given you things in mixed numbers, I'm not going to require you to give me mixed numbers. So here I'll do 13 twelfths. It's not inappropriate to write 1 and 12, 1 twelfth. You can do that as well, but 13 twelfths is fine as well. Would you like to try a couple more examples here? Yes. Okay, I'm going to give you one to do on your own right now, and then we'll cover that in just a little while. So, first, I'd like it's very similar to that one. I'd like you to do the same type of idea. <coughs> Let's do x minus 3 fourths equals 1 20th. x minus 3 fourths equals 1 20th. So the idea is write everything as a fraction first. So put like x over 1. Find your LCD and multiply every single term by the LCD. That's going to get rid of your fractions. Hey, by the way, if you've noticed, this really isn't the same thing as finding a common denominator. We're not doing that process, right? We're trying to eliminate denominators. So look at the board here real quick. I know it might seem a little weird to you. You're like, well, wait a second. Why am I not doing 20 over, tw uh, sorry, in this case, 12 over 12? Why am I not doing 20 over 20? Why, why, do, why can I get away from that? Isn't that changing the value of the fraction? And the answer is, in short, yeah, it is changing the value of fraction. However, there's something special that happens when you have an equation. When you have an equation, as long as you multiply both sides of it, you can multiply by whatever you want. Are you with me? Whatever you want, doesn't really matter. So it's not that you have to multiply by 20 over 20, you're not actually multiplying by one. What you're doing instead is multiplying every term by the same number, that's keeping your equation equal. That's the idea. So we're not finding